Good day, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for finding time for the presentation today. Today's presentation will focus on how to be a successful PM by using structured product deliverables. To be more specific, we'll talk about the working backwards framework, which has been popularized by Amazon. A little bit about myself. My name is Shantanu. Nice to meet everyone virtually. I am a director PM in Microsoft, been here for the last two years. Prior to Amazon, I was in Amazon, AWS, and Amazon.com, essentially building products for the operation and supply chain spaces. Now, let me dive into the presentation today. The agenda today is to basically understand what working backwards means then understanding a summary view of the different life cycles of product management, and then double-clicking on the, each of the three uh, life cycles from a working backwards structure point of view. We'll end up with a PMG sheet, and then we'll proceed ahead. Starting off with the key takeaways today. So this is where a reality check is needed. Many people, have heard this line that product managers are mini CEOs. The reality is very different. Product managers are not mini CEOs. By the fact that they build products through consensus, through influence, there is no formal authority of people or cost for a PM. What does this gap in perception and reality mean? It means three key takeaways. Number one. A PM role is thrive over scope, product life cycle, and organizational influences. As uh, organizations change, their restructures, or the priorities changes, PM is really affected by that. Now, to make sure that a PM becomes successful in this climate, in this challenging product building and organization climate, it's important to use structured product deliverables. They help drive role clarifications, cross-team engagement, and the business outcomes. Now, one way of being very effective of using product deliverables is by using a working backwards framework. Now, let's dive into what is a working backwards framework in the first place. What does working backwards mean? Essentially, working backwards is a product development approach. It starts by putting the customer first and then working backwards from it. Now, as you may have understood, product uh, implementation using working backwards is difficult. It requires discipline and org maturity. However, once implemented, it can reap great rewards for the company as the entire ecosystem is working towards one goal which you know is a very feasible goal from a customer point of view. Now let's understand the pros and cons of this approach. The pros of working backwards, obviously, is you put the customer first, you validate the feasibility, and then you start working. This allows you to actually get the entire organizational support towards the same goal. However, while you're doing this, you also create a document, or rather a walking path, towards which the product can be built. So affected by uncontrollables of the organization, the product part is still there for people to follow. However, with the pros comes the cons. And the cons is that this tends to be a limiting on the creativity side, because you can start having a very, very narrow focus of some features over the other features, right? Uh, the other thing is, obviously, it's pretty time-consuming to run through this entire exercise, especially if your organization is not ready for this. And last but not the least, the PMs bear a huge brunt of it, especially earlier in the product development, when they go about trying to engage the business teams, the tech teams, the leadership, and the multiple other support structures around it. Now, with that, let's move on to what are the product life cycles, right? So product life cycles really vary across organizations and companies, depending on how they look at it. Also, uh, depending on where are you set? Are you building towards customer facing or on the critical path versus are you creating a product for a supporting structure? 
However, let's up level this so we can use a three uh, vertical approach across the product life cycles. The first one is product strategy. Product strategy deals with why should we build something. It essentially looks into our business strategy, our teams, our company's SWOT analysis, strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats. It factors the market needs, the competitive landscape, and the technological advances. It considers all of these things to create a strategy that the leadership can say yes to. After that, from product strategy, we do move to product planning. Product planning is literally the what. What should we build? It defines the features and the decisions which help turn the aligned strategy into reality. So a good product plan would obviously build on the product strategy and then detail out the critical elements what we need to build, especially on the MVP side. The key outputs here would be gain a directional alignment and confirm that the resources are available for this. After we figure out why to build, what to build, we focus on how to build and then actually build it, which is where the third pillar, product development and launch comes into place. Now, these are the decisions and actions to turn the plan into a success, which is creating the DJ product brands, working with the engineering tech teams, having a tracker view, going with all the changes which are happening, and then actually launching the product. And the key output is mapping the entire change management across all the teams with launching a high quality product on time. Now that we understand the summary of your product life cycle from a working backwards point of view, so let's double click on all the three pillars one at a time. Let's start off with product strategy, why to build. This is the famous PRFAQ phase uh, popularized by Amazon. And it essentially three questions we are trying to answer. Is it worth investing? Are there any open questions we need to close out? And should we continue investing in this area? To achieve this, there are two kind of documents which you need. One is a PRFAQ document. Other is a BRD document. Let's start off with the first one. Now, a PRFAQ document is essentially a, a compilation of a vision document and a customer market analysis. The idea being here is that from a vision point of view, what are we building and how does that help the company and the customers? From there, going into a deeper cu cu customer market analysis to understand who are we building for? How will it them help them? How will it help us? Once we nail down the BRFAQ and we get an alignment on that, next comes the BRD document, which is a business requirement document. Here we talk about What's a gap to meet that vision which we're talking about? And what opportunity does the business need to capture based on that? What does success look like for product strategy? For a PM, it's essentially about gaining an exec buying on the PRFQ, gaining a business buying on the BRD, and generating interest across the business and tech teams. Now, the third one is a understated one. Uh, people generally ignore that one. But using your product deliverables to generate interest across the business and tech teams is one of the most powerful networking aspects which you can gain as a PM. Because these are the people who are actually going to be with you across the entire cycle to build a product. These are the people who are going to launch products, hopefully grow, move across companies. And as you develop a working relationship with them, the network grows with them. So please keep that in mind. Now that we moved on from product strategy, let's go on to product planning. Product planning was about what to build. And here, this is the fun structuring the product phase. Here we talk about what should we first build first and why, how should the user use the product, how does he see the product, and how should we build it. So here, we talk about the product roadmap, which is the first document. And the second document is the PRD, the product requirement document. Now, the product roadmap is essentially broken up into two basic sectors, product phasing and the MVP focus. Product phasing is about 
how are you phasing the product in a way that you are best utilizing your limited resources to make a biggest impact to the business and to the customers? It's about how are you phasing it? How will your phases help the customers? And how are they being built one on top of the other? An important element here is to remember the dependencies you have across the different teams to deliver. That frequently becomes a critical element in the phasing. The next part is MVP build. And this starts off with just focusing on the minim on the minimal viable product. What is why is MVP the MVP? What is the need to have versus a good to have delineation to make sure you're truly building what you truly need? How will the product be built? What are the policies and the rules and the field mappings that you have to change? And what are the high level systemic workflows? What this helps is it helps the people understand what kind of product and what kind of changes to the ecosystem you're looking at. making. Once you close that town, you move on to the PRD. And the PRD is a very, very critical document because this is a document which literally translates the why and what to how to build. This is where a product manager has to go into details and the technical um, aspects really shine out there when you build the detailed view on the MVP. For, uh, features, the fields, the user stories, the policies, the configurations, creating a wireframing effort to help the engineering team understand exactly what has to be built. If a PM is technical enough, building a level two or a level three system diagram in this really, really helps because then the engineers start understanding which of the modules and what is the ownership structure across the software tech teams to make that happen. Now, what does the success look like here? Success here means you gain the business and the tech team buy-in on the roadmap, right? The engagement you are trying to do is really going to help us here as the teams are interested, they know this product is going to shape, they pay you better focus and they give you better feedback on this. Then, sub point number two, you gain a tech buy-in on the PRD, which if they do not sign off, then the next state of development will not start. The third is planning on the RACI chart for product flows. And this is something, again, which is very understated across teams. Building a RACI chart is very, very critical because from now, it's the development is going to start. Knowing exactly who is responsible accountable, who has to be consulted, who has to be informed over the entire development cycle is very, very critical because that's where the changes are going to happen. That's where things are going to slip. That's where the direction may change. And having that particular matrix will help you navigate that better. Now that we have dived into the product planning, let's move into the product development and notch. And here is where the rubber meets the road the actual development has to start, right? And the key questions asked in this phase is, is the product on track? Did the product launch on time? Is the product successful? So I've broken up this phase into three pillars. Roadmap tracker, which answers, is the product on track? Testing documents, which look at the quality of the product which you're building. And is the product successful, which is a lot about the launching documents, and how are we measuring the product launch? Now, roadmap tracker. This is one of uh, the very popularized Gantt chart views which you have, which talks about uh, breaking up the product into multiple work streams, which make most sense for the organization. Understanding the cross dependencies, green, yellow, and reds, reason for changes. Uh, this is a roadmap tracker, which is has to be frequently sent to leadership. Depending on the kind of product you're building, you may have to send it every week, every two weeks, every month. Um, so having the RACI, a clear RACI, with a roadmap tracker aligned, really, really helps the PM move the things forward. The testing documents. I mentioned the system in UAT testing. There are other unit testing and other kinds of testing also, A-B testing. Uh, system and UAT testing is something which is uh, general across all different kinds of products that you build. And it is very, very important to understand the different elements we need to be tested. 
the data flows across APIs, the cross-system parsing of data, the dependencies, and the sample data set scenarios. Now, one thing which is missed out a lot when we are trying to get an ETA and a time understanding of the different components for developers is that the tech teams talk about the things which they need to build within their black boxes. The integration timelines across these different boxes are frequently missed or understated because the teams haven't really uh, sat together to figure out how will the integration pieces work. I would suggest as a PM, you bring that up and make sure there's a lot of focus in the right timelines and understanding being developed over there. In the testing documents, that gap really, really shows up. Launch documents, the third pillar. Launch documents are all about how are we supporting this product launch? It's not just about the launch email, but on the launch communication, but also talking about how are we supporting the launch? How are we keeping a strong eye on the critical metrics of a launch? How are we capturing user feedback? And how are we quickly using that user feedback into prioritizing it to improve the product? Now, what does success look like here? Success here would be an updated and accurate roadmap communication which facilitates a discussion around the changes of the roadmap and how we can bring it back on track. For testing documents, it talks about completed test use cases, which are actually used by the team, and they actually surface real problems. And from a launch document point of view, obviously it's a successful launch, but apart from that, uh, the user feedbacks and how they are being integrated into the uh, development of the V1 becomes very, very critical. Now that we got a chance to work all these three uh, different phases and look at this from a working backwards point of view, I just created this simple cheat sheet about stages, the deliverables, and what success looks like in all the deliverables. And with that, I wish you the best in your PM journey. And I look forward to meeting you, all of you, uh, virtually or physically in some space. Thank you so much.